Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's talk about AI BI Genie in Databricks. The last video I explained you about this Databricks notebook itself and there are so many new features included into it. I recommend you watch that video first. In this video, let's go through the Databricks AI BI Genie, which is a no code, low code solution provided by Databricks. I think as if it is a text to SQL where you ask the natural language question, it converts that into the SQL and then goes to your database and provides you the answer in the natural language format. I will show you how it works later. But how the video will proceed first is I will show you how you can turn on the Genie into the Databricks workspace itself if you haven't or your admin has not done it already. We'll go through creating the space exploring the specs, asking the questions here and there, and how to make the journey smarter over time. So this is AI integrated under the hood. As I said, we can help it make uh, smarter over time. And at the last, I will show you what might be the best practices or my suggestions. Let's get started. Before getting into the actual implementation, I just want to show you the blog post provided by Databricks itself. Any converts with your data. I will provide the link in the description, but you can go through and read uh, what it is all about. The diagram that I want to show you is this one here. As you can see on the bottom, there is enterprise data. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, there is the enterprise data and there is the Unity catalog sitting just on top of the enterprise data. So the governance and all the things is being handled there, right? SS policies, fine grained control applied to rows and columns ensure only secure data return to end users. And then there is the compound AI system. So all the things, let's say they are calling it as a compound AI system, just think as if this is an agent framework or something like that, which does all the things uh, for you on top of the Unity catalog. And then there is this AI BI dashboards, AI BI Jenny, and then there is this uh, secure answers written from here. So everything you can see goes to the uh, compound AI system, which talks to the Unity catalog, and there is the enterprise data that is residing under that. I hope you get the idea somehow how it gets into the data part, right? So now let's go to the Databricks console. So you can see this is the Databricks UI. You can see it. You don't see the AI BI Genie in the Databricks. First step, as I mentioned in this diagram, is to turn on the uh, Genie. For that, what we can do is go on the top here. You must be admin in order to provide this feature to your user. So if you are just uh, using it uh, for yourself, you need to go here and turn on. And by the way, this is not provided in the free version. You need to be either in the free trial or then you need to be using the paid version of this, right? Go to this previews. If you go to the previews, there are all the different features that you can turn on. One is the Genie. By default, it is not on. So it says here, no code experience for business users powered by LLMs. Analyst set up spaces which business users can use to ask the questions. Unity catalog. I just showed you in the figure, Databricks Assistant and Pro Serverless SQL, SQL Warehouses. So I will show you how it works later. But we need to just do turn on here or if you want to know more information, just go to the documentation and get more into it. So this is really good feature for let's say business analyst, data analyst or maybe for pro engineers also where you can just go and ask the questions and it provides the answer so it gives you the initial thinking of what you should do and what is the data about already there right now it is turned on you can see it is still here but i will refresh the page so once i refresh the page you can see now there is the genie now i will make this page a little bit bigger right so you can see the genie here i will now go inside the genie this is the space because I haven't done anything here. It says here, ask questions about data in a natural language. What you need to do first, now the third step is creating a space here, right? If you just click this plus icon, now here is the space being uh, created and you need to provide the title. I will just give it test because this is the test, uh, right? Test YouTube. I will describe what data is available in this space. The data set is Titanic data for now because I'm going to give the example of Titanic data set for you in this video. By the way, these descriptions, the more you know about the table, 
provide more information here and now here is the default warehouse that i said you before right it only works with the warehouse and it says no options because i haven't turned on the warehouse so for that what we can do is let me go to the warehouse here in the compute or i can directly go to the sql warehouse i'll open in the new tab let me go to the new tab and here you can see the sql warehouse i don't have any sql warehouses so i'll just go here and create a sql warehouse i will just name here youtube right and here is the x large from here you can choose any of the any of the things here but you can just go here and say after inactivity how many minutes is scaling or i want to have the server list or the pro right there is the options and we need either pro or serverless to get started i will say serverless i can go with the 2x the data is not that big i think this is the smallest one yes i can go with this one and remember once you get into the bigger ones it's 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 become expensive over time it is 4 dbu per hour right i will say serverless and i will say create and the the idea of serverless is also it's just it starts in couple of seconds instead of waiting for the cluster to open so here it says do you want information about i am the owner no i don't want it now right now we have the serverless here now what i can do is let me open this and i was here in the jenny space and if i now go here you can see there is the running and youtube meaning that I just created that serverless. I can just choose the YouTube that is already running, right? Now, so here, choose the tables to use for answering questions in this space. It is best to keep the scope for each space as small as possible. Data access is governed with the viewer's Unity catalog permissions, right? So we go here. There is uh, two things. There is one called data science basics. I created the catalog. Inside the catalog, I have three different schemas. I will go and choose the UTV schema. And here I have just one table. That is the Titanic. By the way, you can choose more than one tables also. I don't have more than one tables. It is not shown here. One UI perspective, I think I want to give uh, if someone from Databricks is watching this also, the UI does not look that intuitive at this moment. There should be some plus icon or something here, but it's just remove here. So I was confused in the beginning also, is it just one table I can add or many tables, right? But here, just by going through the UI, you don't see that you can add more tables. For example, here there is this plus icon. If there was plus icon here, it would be easier that we can add more uh, data sets uh, or tables into it. I just want to show you what I mean here. If I go to the information schema, is there, yeah, I will show the example what I mean here. For example, I want to go with the catalog privileges. That is one table. Now you can see there is two of the things already being selected. That is what I just mentioned. It should be somehow shown plus or something because it was confusing that you can choose more tables also. Now if I just go here and choose catalogs, it is already there. This is kind of confusing. I think for me it was confusing in the beginning, but once I get into it, this is how it works. It was useful. I'm taking a little bit more time here because uh, this is, I think, confusing part uh, and you should explain for each and every user. Okay, this is how it works. So yeah, I will remove this one. I just want to go with this Titanic one. And here you can already provide the sample questions. For example, in the chart GPT or in other providers, you see that there is already this default questions, right? What we can do here, I can say, okay, what is the data? And you can just go ahead and click plus and you can provide more. For example, can you explain me the columns of the data set? For example, like this, you can type enter also, it goes to the next one. It's fine, two questions right now. I will do the save. So now our space is being created. If you just go here and see there is the data part. Here you can see the Titanic data set is being used. From here already you can see all the columns that are in the data set. But let's add that I don't have I don't have, I have no knowledge about the data set, right? Here you can see I am giving this test YouTube and the data set is Titanic data set that I provided it. And this is the thing that I said, can you explain me the columns of the data set? What is the data set about? Explain the data set. These are the questions, it's already there. What I can do now is just click this one. What is the data set about? I don't know anything about it. I will click this one. 
and now you can see the question is being sent fetching the metadata thinking and all the different things is uh, going under the hood and now the data set is about the passengers from the titanic it includes the information such as passenger id all the different columns are being uh, shown here right okay this is fine you can just give up thumbs up meaning that we provided to the ai assistant that okay you are performing good so now you can just go ahead and ask as many questions as you want for example you can say how many people survived it will just go through the data set and it will provide us the answer you can see there is the running the query and so on right first one it does not need to run the query so now you can see the survivors is 342 this is how it provides the answer and if you want to copy this in the clipboard you can copy it in the clipboard you can download it as csv and you can even even refresh the data if you want you can give the thumbs up here you can see generated code you can see the code that is being generated select count all as survivors from this survived equals to one so then you can see the data and now what the good part is add as instruction meaning that this is good right i want the ai assistant to take these instructions and learn from this in the future also so what i can add as instruction and now it is being added where it is going here if you go to this instruction part you can see how many people survived is now already being shown here so in the future it takes that also in account and say okay this is what i need to go through that is what i have learned so far right if you go again to the uh, chat you go inside the chat and now let's say that i want to visualize you can just say auto visualize now it is going to visualize the data for us that is also already a good part and you can see here there is a diagram but this is just a simple one count survivors it is just showing the survivors right and if you go to the data also you can see it goes through the schema and all the different things are shown here but this is not a good visualization because we just have this 342 but imagine you have this complex sql queries and you want to visualize something can you group by the passengers passengers age just a simple question if you provide detailed information it will provide you the answer i'm just saying okay can you please specify what kind of aggregation you want the good part of this is if it does not understand the question it asks you for clarification could you please specify what kind of aggregation you want like to perform on the passengers ages example count average sum, and if there are any specific conditions or groupings example by survival status class right this is already a good hint for us and this one also i can give thumbs up provide this kind of information now what i can say here is aggregation by grouping by class i already said their passenger is and then also by the class right so now it will understand what i asked so this query calculates the total age of passengers grouped by their passenger class so here you can see there is passenger class one two three and the total age there and you can even give thumbs up here and show the generated code so now you can select all these home as this and this and if i now say auto visualize it is going to use the suitable one to visualize the data there is also the option for bar chart and and whatnot so yeah you can see there is one two three you can just go here and ask as many questions as you want and you will get now let me go back and see what i was um, going to say you okay turn on jenny creating this space exploring this space how to make jenny smarter as i said you giving thumbs up and also this uh, add instructions which goes into this and and it makes it more in more smarter best practice if i go back here now this works perfectly fine right the, you can just go ahead and ask as many questions as you want no problem i just want to show you this one so you can share this also just go here and now you can see this is me and there is the admin inherited you can copy the link and from here you can see uh, you can source the names for multiple users in your organizations it can run can view or something and you can even copy link and provide to them they can go here and then view the things that you just uh, did it is same as how the chat gpt and other chat ui works right you can just share it and uh, they can uh, work from there also 
this is one and now monitoring you can see all the chart is being saved here you can just go here and do by ratings by users by status is completed fail pending uh, and so on and this is the good good if there is bad also it comes here and so on you already have the monitoring capabilities here and now this is the data as i showed you before you can just go here and view the data but one more really good thing about Databricks, although this is not directly linked to the JNE, how to make the JNE better, right? The best practices, go to the uh, catalog. And now here in the catalog, there is this Titanic data set. But you can see that there is no descriptions. One good part of Databricks, as I said in my previous video also, is there is many AI agents all over the places. AI agents or assistants or whatever you want to call it. And here you can see the AI suggested description is already being created. The best practice always in your enterprise data or in your personal data, provide the description for the table so that the AI will know better where to get the information from. Here you can see the AI suggested descriptions is provided uh, here. I can just go here and modify, edit or accept it. So once I accept, now this table has the description. This already helps for the uh, assistant to provide us the better answer. Next thing also, you can, there is no comments here, right? You can see this is passenger ID, big int, there is no comment, no tax, column masking rule, there is nothing. But let's say we want to have the comments. This is the essential part to make your AI smarter. Just go here and say AI can help suggest comments for columns without uh, comments. I will just say AI generate. Now it is going to create all the comments for the columns. If you see here, now it will populate. You can see that it says, okay, this is a unique identifier for each passenger and so on. This is really helpful already by AI. You can just click this accept. You can go here. You can just go here and click for those that you want to have it done. Uh, so let's say that you want to make it done. This is also done. Let's maybe all do all done. Mm. Now you can see that all of the columns has the comments in it. This is really good that our AI now when goes through this particular table, it knows from where all, of course, it already knew from where to extract the data, but now it's smarter in that it knows this column has this information, so I can get this information from there. This is one way of making your data more good for the uh, AI models. And one thing that I want to show you, if I go back, now you can see all the columns and their description is appearing here, so it performs even uh, better. Right. And the next thing I want to show you is if you go to the settings part. So here there is these, these things that we write in the beginning. You can just remove it from here, add from here. You can move to the trash and from here you can add more tables and so on. Right. This is what I mentioned you before. Now, again, about the instructions, I want to a little bit focus here because here you can see this was one of the add as instructions being appearing here. If you go here and the generate instructions, add general instructions on how you want Jenny to behave. Please provide as many information as you want here so that the chatbot, it's, it's a chatbot under the hood, right? It's the rag application, let's say under the hood. It behaves better. So provide as many information as you want here. So it provides the answer better. I hope now you get the idea how to use AI BI Jenny into your organization or for your personal project. The next video I will be creating is about the AI BI dashboards, how to use the power of AI or LLMs into the dashboards and make good dashboards out of it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.